This kit from Games Workshop is £25. So tell me, would you rather pay £25 or just £8? £25, £25 or just £8? £25, £25 or £8? £25, £25 or just £8? But which price would you rather pay? How you doing guys, Big Mac Dan School here again today, back once again with another episode of my Warhammer 40,000 Conquest series for you. Today, I'll be reviewing issue, whoa, 19. No, 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 19, 19. No, 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 19, 19. So in issue 19 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest magazine, what do we get? We get these bad boys. This is Lord Feltheus and his cohort, uh, which is basically a set of four um, what do they call them? A set of four Black Lord Terminators. And um, they're selling out fast. I've heard tales already of people queuing up outside WH Smith, waiting for it to open on Tuesday morning when the magazine goes on the shelves. It did used to go out initially on a Wednesday, but for some reason now it's going out on a Tuesday morning. So I've heard tales of people queuing up outside the shop going in, buying all the copies that are available because the savings are that good on this this particular issue. So if you've not got it now, if you're not subscribed to Conquest and if you're not set up a subscription through your uh, local news agents, then chances are you're not going to get your hands on this issue. Um, it's out of Conquest, it's out of, um, out of stock on the Hatchet Partworks website as I speak. Uh, and that is Wednesday night now. It's Wednesday Wednesday evening, just gone 8 o'clock. It's out of stock on the Hatchet Parkworks website. Um, it's probably worth checking back there because I think I've checked in the past and then the next day it's been available again. So, basically, if you've not got this issue already, you may have missed out. Get down to your local stockist as soon as you can um, and to maximise your chances of picking one up. Um, but unfortunately, I think people have ta really taken advantage here and and gone out and grabbed the grabbed all the issues they can because you're getting, like I said, effectively four Black, Black Lord Terminators for um, eight pounds instead of twenty five pounds, and you can run these just as Black Lord Terminators if you want. You can easily convert Lord Feltheus um, just to be carrying standard Black Lord Terminator weapons. So this issue of Conquest, let's actually get in, into the meat and bones of what's inside. Uh, it says on the front, Lord Feltheus attacks Black Lord Terminators and teleports into battle, giving us a little clue of what is in, what is contained there. So first off, it talks about Lords of Contagion, gives us some nice fluff there. There are six pages of um, fluff or lore in this particular issue, so not bad for the people who like the lore, the lore connoisseurs. Um, and then it goes over, over the course of the next few pages, it tells us a little bit more about... Um, uh, about Lords of Contagion, I've forgotten what I was talking about already, and uh, specifically Lord Feltheus. Uh, it gives us information about Lord Feltheus, uh, his name, Lord Feltheus. His Vectorum is the Tainted Sons, Battlefield Role Commander, Mantle of Corruption, Lords of Contagion, and Weaponry, Man Reaper. Um, so, it's just giving you an idea of, uh, of the sorts of different sorts of Chaos Lords that exist. Um, and then onto the next page. It talks about the Rockbringer, which is um, Lord Feltheus's flagship. And then it talks on the following page, following two pages, about Black Lord Terminators. Um, so, just tells us about them. There's a lovely bit of artwork here. I really like this artwork. Let's see if I can get this without getting a reflection on it. Hopefully you've got no reflection on it. I really like this piece of art. Um, it is a Black Lord Terminator. And he's got... Oh, my hand's just frozen in that position now. That was weird. Um, he's got essentially um, a helmet that just covers his eyes and you can't see any vision slots and then it's like it's torn open and just the mouth sticking out now I don't particularly like Lord Feltheus's head so I was thinking about doing a conversion but it's one of those big grinning Nurgle heads like a little proper stupid smile and his head's also the shape of a, a large pumpkin or something ridiculous so I'm not a massive fan of the head all round so what I'm tempted to do is try and just do some green stuff over it to make it look like that bit of artwork that I just showed you I'm going to get it back and show you again 
So I like that bit of artwork. I really like that artwork and um, I think it's a doable conversion potentially. Maybe it's going to be a bit trickier than I initially thought or than, than I initially think but um, I don't think it'll be too tricky. And then it's on to the how to build section. We've got one, two, three, four pages in how to build. I don't think that's excessive considering the such um, lovely models, although they are all like single single ways to build them. Um, other than there's a couple of things you can stick on the base. You could uh, swap them between the miniatures. Um, and then it's on the onto the how to paint. How to paint how to paint section has changed now. Uh, they've gone to this new format of uh, showing us a snippet. Of with each colour, so Abaddon black or Abaddon black there, Lev Belcher there, and then it's showing us roughly where to paint each colour in just two photos because there's a lot of paints now, so they kind of have to cover it in as few photos as possible. And then the last photo, last page here shows us like the fully painted miniature at the front. Now, if you turn it over handily, it shows it us at the back as well. Um, so you get a good idea then. They're, they're sort of trusting you more with the painting guide. And uh, they kind of had to do that really because there's only so many pictures you can print on a page. If you compare this to the painting guides in White Dwarf, uh, you probably get a little bit more information in the White Dwarf painting guides. But the pictures are smaller. Uh, they could have gone with that format in here, but for some reason they're, they're steering clear and they're keeping it as a format specific to, uh, to Conquest magazine. Um, I think it works well enough um, and I do just like that they're giving you two pages of how to paint effectively. Well it's four pages all together but one of the pages is a back to back page of the front and the back of the miniature once complete. And it gives you a little snippet saying spin your models round to make sure there aren't any areas on the rear you have missed. Just a little snippet there just to show you what the, uh, the odd back photo of a miniature is. It's rare to see in print at the, the back of a miniature. And then it's on to the Teleporter Strike mission, the gameplay mission. Um, so how many pages is that already? One, two, three. So that's 14 pages. Yeah, 14 pages where we're up to there. And then it's on to the, onto the rules bit already. Teleporter Strike. Um, it tells you to set up with these diagonal um, triangular deployments. Uh, diagonal triangular? These are triangular corner deployment zones. Um, with a 7 inch by 7 inch um, square effectively divided in two for the deployment zone and um, it tells us what forces to take so you're taking the plague marines Lord Felthius and the tainted cohort so that's the models in this one plus three plague marines and the space marines are taking a primaris librarian five intercessors three aggressors uh, how to win for the death guard you must have at least one unit still on the table at the end of battle round five Space Marines will win by eliminating all of the Death Guard units before Battle Round 5. I think that's quite doable for the Death Guard, to be honest, because they are very uh, very survivable units. The Black Lord Terminators, if I'm not mistaken, have a 4 up inborn save. Let me check. Cataphracty Armour, the armour has a 4 up inborn save. Yeah, so that means you've got a 50 50 chance of saving any shots that come at you. It also has a two up save as standard, so a lot of shots will just bounce off the armour. And then, of course, they've got Disgusting and Resilient as well, so there's a lot of survivability in those uh, Black Lord Terminator models and any Death Guard models in Cataphracty armour. Um, so that's interesting, it's going to be interesting that one with the use of the Primaris Librarian, three Aggressors, five Intercessors. Um, I'd say it's, yeah, I'd say it's in favour of the Death Guard there, really. Uh, but we'll have to see once we've played the mission. Will I be playing a mission anytime soon? And hopefully, hopefully, we're still playing on the on the deck of the Honor of Ultramar. There, you'll notice. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be issue twenty one when we start playing on the new battle map. Um, so, yeah, good little mission there. And then it's uh, victory is nine. It's uh, given us a little snippet of um, the. I'll, I'll read it out to you. Why not, eh? The corridors of the Honor of Ultramar echo with battle cries of Ultramarines. Corvon 2 is within range, and despite their losses, the Ultramarines are being ready to fight on the planet. Only a small number of Plague Marines remain aboard the damaged vessel, and they are being aggressively pursued by their Space Marine enemies. Librarian Arion leads his troops to the cargo deck, intending to be present at the moment of victory. 
All is not lost for the Death Guard, however. On the Rockbringer, Lord Feltheus has decided to launch a decisive strike and stop his hated enemies before they can join the battle on the surface. Summoning forth his bodyguard, the Tainted Cohort, he steps into the Teleportarium Chamber. On the honour of Ultramar, the Ultramarines close in on a few remaining Plague Marines, bolters trained on their enemies and victory assured. As the Space Marines prepare to fire at the end of the fight, a spark of green lightning flashes across the deck, causing Librarian Arion to avert his gaze. Amidst the crack crackling lightning, the giant form of Lord Feltheus appears, Plague Sensor held aloft, and murder in his eyes. <sighs> so... Um, that leads us nicely onto the fact that he teleported in there and it talks us through special deployment in this uh, next page, uh, the following two pages and entering game mid, entering play rather mid game um, and a few units have different ways of doing that so um, the Cataphracti Armoured Lord of Contagion uh, also known as Lord Feltheus in this case uh, can deploy via teleporter strike and so can his Blight Lord Terminators. Uh, so that means they may not be around at the start of the battle, but they can deploy in potentially at the end of the first turn or in the second, third or fourth turn, depending on the various rules that um, that apply to units that can do that sort of thing. And then it's on to uh, onto the, the back page. Yeah, we've got uh, another little preview of the uh, Your New Playmat and the equipment, the um, terrain rather, that comes with it there. Um, we've seen that before. I think that's uh, pretty much the same as we saw in the last issue. Uh, Conquest continues, little snippet at the bottom there, but I think we saw that all in the last issue. On to what we get in issue 20. Like we knew, it was the containers coming in issue 20. But what's after that? Oh, it's Reavers. Three more easy-to-build Primaris Reavers. Uh, so it's more repeat miniatures. We've seen them before. You also get a copy of the core rules, which is fantastic. Um, eight page core rules. Uh, it's a little card fold out thing that you get in uh, a lot of Warhammer 40,000 8th edition starter sets, for want of a better word. So you get one in First Strike, you get one in No No Fear, you get one in the Dark Imperium starter set, you get one in a lot of the starter sets. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, so uh, it's issue 21 is the Reavers. Um, I imagine we're going to be down on the planet fighting a battle. In the last page, yeah, the it says that in issue 21, the battle for Corbon 2 begins. So, in issue 21, um, we'll be fighting on a new playmat, basically. They'll give us rules for, potentially new rules for deployment or something like that um, in fighting on the playmat. And uh, maybe some rules involving different areas of the playmat, something like that. Um, so, it's something to look forward to there. Um, although they are repeat miniatures... I think the Reavers are quite easily reposable if you just clip off the um, the bits that connect the, the arms to the torsos and you can just turn the arms around to different positions. You can even swap the arms over between the different Reavers. Uh, you could get a scalpel or a, a knife of, uh, you know, a, a hobby knife and just scrape off the grenades off the chest if you wanted to just to make them look a little bit different. Um, you could even swap the helmets out for um, some intercessor helmets or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's what we've got coming in the next couple of issues. So that's uh, my opinion, overall opinion on this issue. Bargain, obviously. Um, and that's why people have gone in and snapped up however many copies their local WH Smith has, has had in. Um, I imagine they get about no more than, probably no more than 10 copies. I imagine it's something in the region of four, five, six copies that certain WH Smiths will get in. Um, it was the one in Liverpool that I heard a report of that. So it's just unfortunate. If you see one in a WH Smith and you are willing to, um, pick it up for me. And I'll get in touch with the gentleman that I know has missed out on this issue. He's a Death Guard player, you see, and he doesn't want to collect, doesn't want to subscribe to the magazine because he doesn't want the Space Marines. So if you, by any chance, um, anyone out there, if you see one sat on a shelf in a WH Smith or your local news agents, do me a favour, pick it up, get in touch with me and I'll get in touch with the gentleman and then um, we'll go from there, see if we can get it to him. Uh, that'd be fantastic. There we go. That's about all I've got for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the battlefield.